For a look right now at the state of the airlines and what's ahead for the summer travel season, we want to bring in Ryan Air Group CEO Michael O'Leary. Ryan Air Group flies the most passengers in Europe, and it reported full-year results this morning. The airline reporting a $1.5 billion net profit, also saw a 74% increase in full-year traffic. That stock up by about 1.6% right now. And, Michael, thank you for coming in. Pleasure, Becky. Great to be back in New York. So strong numbers, and it was a number of things. I, I think you're getting higher prices, and demand is really strong, too. Yeah, look, there's been a very strong post-COVID recovery in Europe. Uh, we are by far and away the largest airline in Europe. Uh, this summer looks even stronger still. There's a huge inflow of Americans coming to Europe this year. You can't get on a golf course anywhere all summer long. We've had a very strong dollar. The Asians are starting to come back to Europe as well. And fundamentally, people who've been locked up for two years during COVID are back traveling, and travel is seen much more as a necessity now rather than a luxury. Which means what in terms of pricing? Because you guys are, are pride yourself on your low prices. When you raise prices, what are we talking? What kind of? Oh, well, we don't. I mean, what's actually happening in Europe is uh, Europe this summer will be operating short haul at about 90, 95 percent of pre-COVID capacity, but much stronger transatlantic flows, stronger Asian flows. Demand is fundamentally strong. The competition, the legacy guys, the uh, Lufthansa's, the BAs, the Air France's are pricing up 20, 30 percent. Uh, we're less than that because we're growing so strongly. Uh, but we're seeing stronger pricing. We think prices this summer will be up a, a second year at double-digit uh, price inflation. We're not quite sure what double-digit it'll be yet. Um, and we're one of the few airlines in Europe. We're taking about 50 aircraft from Boeing each year for the next couple of years. So we have significant growth into a stronger pricing environment, and hopefully and that will result in stronger profitability over the next year or two. Boeing's your buddies again? We're in love with Boeing again. We, uh, 10 days ago, signed our, uh, signed our biggest ever order. 300 MAX 10s for delivery from 27 out to 3033, which means we will grow double in size. We had 149 million passengers pre-COVID. Uh, in the next decade, we'll grow to 300 million passengers, about a 33% share of the European marketplace. The good guys win, Becky. What, what kind of <laughs> discounts did they have to offer to win your love back? Not enough. Uh, <laughs> it's never enough with <laughs> Boeing, you know. Why are you at 90, 95% capacity? Not you. Why is the industry only at 90, 95%? Because COVID shook out so much capacity, Steve. You know, we had failures at Thomas Cook, Flybee, Norwegian effectively failed. Alitalia has come back about 50, with only 50% of the fleet. An awful lot of the European airlines had to engage in huge restructuring if they didn't go bust. Uh, well, why we, wouldn't I just respond to you? Are you keeping capacity low so you can keep raising prices? We're raising this summer. We'll have 25 percent more capacity. It's definitely what's good. The legacy is guy. the industry keeping capacity low. So yes. They can be... Yeah. I mean, I think the, the most egregious well, example of that is Lufthansa in the German market is only operating at about 80 percent of its pre-COVID capacity. Airfares in the German so market have doubled. The, where are the regulators in Europe uh, uh, getting on their case about that? There's not a lot regulators can do. You know, I mean, they, there is materially less capacity. I mean, the real challenge for us as an industry, I think, but the advantage uh, of the airline industry as an investment for the long only guys is the manufacturers are constrained for the next four or five years. Boeing and Airbus's order book is essentially full to the early 2030s. They can't double production because the supply chains are all challenged the engine manufacturers, the avionics. Right. They, so there's going to be constrained capacity in Europe, I think, for the next four or five How years. How about you getting workers in order to increase your capacity? Can you no. find them? Yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we pay high. We, we, we have about 1,000 pilots, about 2,000 cabin crew per term, I mean, continuously going through uh, training. Uh, this year, we'll see our labor go from 18,000 people to about 21,000 people. Uh, because we're the only airline in Europe delivering growth. Eighteen to twenty-one. 18 to 20, oh, 18. Sorry, okay. my apologies. Eighteen to twenty-one thousand. Uh, messing me up there. The, English is only a second language, Steve. That's right. <laughs> the, I think you said earlier today that you think the industry is going to undergo major consolidation. That's yeah. one thing the regulators could stop, and they are stopping here in the United States. Uh, they are, but I mean, uh, the industry is still fractured. In it. Remember, the European industry is financially broken. You know, uh, Alitalia is bankrupt. You know, it, it only survived COVID with a three billion bailout from the Italian, but the 55th bailout of Alitalia by the Italian government. They're going to sell it to Lufthansa before the end of this year. TAP. A tiny airline in Portugal, with the flag carrier. There's only 10 million people in Portugal. They put three billion into TAP to keep it alive, and yet it's emerged out of COVID, only half the size it was pre-COVID. Europe is moving towards the same consolidation the, North, the industry did in North America a decade ago. There will be three large connecting carriers: Lufthansa, Air France, KLM, BA, and the one good guy, which would be the Irish Ryanair. <laughs> Um, the other issue that a lot of people are facing, the industry itself is facing, is higher fuel costs. Yep. You benefited this most recent quarter from hedges that went your way, that, that sure. were dead on. 
Uh, you expect that prices will go up from here? Where, how do you handle it? What kind of hedges do you have for the future? Yeah, we're hedged. We're kind of 80% hedged out for the next 12 months to March 24. A, bit, a little bit higher than last year. Last year we hedged at about $65 a barrel. This year we're hedged at about $88 a barrel. So our oil bill's going up by about a billion euros in the next 12 months. But You're hedged at oil above the price it's trading right now. Uh, we are. Yeah, sometimes you get it. Sometimes you get it right. Sometimes you get it wrong. But ultimately, we hedge so that we have cost certainty for the next fiscal cycles for the next 12 months. But the higher fares in Europe, and our fares are lagging behind most of our competitors in terms of increases, uh, will pay for that increased oil, which is why this morning we expect to grow traffic 10 percent to the next 12 months to about 185 million passengers. We're modestly expecting profitability will kind of follow that an increase of about 10 percent. What are those? I know we got.